In this video, we're going to show you how to scan things such as sculptures, artwork, statues, and things like that using the Creaform GoScan Spark. Now in this demo, we are going to show scanning a statue and we're going to do it in real time uh, and just show you the whole process. But if you want to learn a lot more about the GoScan Spark, uh, in the description below is a link to a very detailed demonstration that really goes into all the features and benefits of the scanner and we show some different types of parts and scanning with color and a lot more stuff. So check out that video if you want a really in-depth video. So to get started, the first step in the process is always to calibrate the scanner. And what that'll do is use software to compensate for any changes, usually it's thermal expansion. So if you kept your scanner, let's say in an air conditioned environment, and then you go out into a, you know, a hot environment somewhere, um, you will calibrate using this plate, uh, which comes with the scanner and it stores in the travel case with it. And you're just taking sample measurements at different angles and different depths. And the software is looking at those target locations, comparing them to the factory locations, and doing any software compensation for thermal expansion. And that's just going to give you the best accuracy uh, of the scanner. And you can see that's a very quick process. So we're ready now to get scanning. And the first thing we'll do is put the statue here on a rotary table. It's a concrete statue. It's heavy. So this is just a homemade Lazy Susan, and it just makes it easy to scan. Now on the table, you'll see targets. We're not using targets. We're not going to get into that, but they're already on the table. It's not going to really help us or hurt us, but we just basically tell the software to start scanning, and we just start moving around. It's kind of like digital spray painting. Um, you kind of hold the scanner perpendicular to the object, and you start moving around and you're just trying to cover uh, you know, the whole uh, object with the scanner. And you see a few things going on here in the display. Everywhere you see green, so you're seeing the 99 projected lines, everywhere you see green, um, basically it's collecting data. Anywhere you see red or blue, that is out of your depth of field. Now it has a pretty generous depth of field of about six to eight inches of basically where uh, it can see and pick up the 3D data. Um, so you want to hold the scanner uh, away from the part till you see, you know, mostly green most of the time. Um, it doesn't hurt. You're just not getting any scan data in those areas. So you can see we're moving up and down and we're trying to stay somewhat perpendicular to the object. Now, because of the shape of the object, we're going to have to articulate up, down, around to get up under, for example, his arms, under his chin, um, things like that. You need to kind of, you know, rotate and point the scanner uh, to get those areas. But the good news is, is you can't over scan the part. Uh, you can you can scan over the same areas over and over and over. It doesn't hurt anything. Um, it's actually, you know, a good thing to do to make sure you have good uh, coverage of the part and um, you just keep going around it till you think you know you have all the scan data you can start and stop and and zoom in and look at it and we'll do that here shortly um, there's nothing automatic that says hey you've you've captured everything um, but you can visually look and zoom in and rotate and you know determine if you've missed some spots and on a lot of objects like this, it's it's impossible to get every nook and cranny, we'll call it, on a part. Um, we have some tools in the software to compensate for that, but we definitely want to try to get as much as we can. And you can see, we've pretty much got the whole thing here scanned. But again, just to be safe, we can keep moving around, uh, you know, going up and down and making sure we have all of those areas. And again, once we're done, uh, we can zoom in in the software here, take a look around, see if we've missed any areas. And if we think we have, we just go back and continue to do the scanning until we think we're done. Now, again, you can see those targets down on the table. You can also see we've picked up the table a little bit. We're going to address that in a minute. But again, if we see areas that we've missed, 
we just go ahead and start scanning. You also notice on the back of it, it has a little strap that's nice to just kind of hold on to it. It's pretty lightweight, but that just ensures you don't drop it. Um, you know, if you're up on a ladder or something trying to scan something very large, um, it's just nice to know that's, you know, it's secured to your hand. So again, we can keep going around, pick up those areas we think we missed, zoom in, take a look at the data. And if we're satisfied with the results, we can hit uh, stop scan and get ready for the next step. Now I mentioned the scanner is line of sight and we obviously couldn't scan the bottom of the part. And then we also picked up this, the rotary table or the lazy Susan. We picked up some of that during our scanning process and we picked up those targets. Now again, we don't need those targets, but they were already on the table. Um, so we're not gonna take them off. So we need to clean this up and we need to scan the bottom of the statue. So what I just did is say, create a clipping plane and it automatically found that flat area and we clipped it off. Now we want to get rid of that clipping plane now because we don't need it anymore. And we're also going to get rid of the targets. So I'm just going to zoom in and select those and delete them. Because we've moved the, the statue, if we were to continue to use the targets, they're not in the same relationship as the statue is now. And now we just say continue scanning. And this is going to allow us to get the bottom of the part and then also scan up underneath any areas maybe we couldn't uh, get before uh, the bottom of his um, his gown um, was hard to reach because the uh, you know with the part on the table so what we're going to do now is just start uh, uh, scanning so when we do that we just pull the trigger we just start somewhere we already were uh, we had already scanned the software will automatically um, recognize that and we just go through the same process again and you can see it's automatically uh, align the scan data and we again just work around till net till we get the areas um, that we you know we didn't get before and again it's the same process our final step is to do some additional cleanup and then export the model so you can see we've got the uh, the little box we had it sitting on we picked up some of the table and what we're going to do is we're going to select the statue and because it's separated um, we're going to invert the selection and we're going to then delete all that data. So the way we set it up on that box and the way we scanned it, it's not connected to the statue. So that makes it very easy to delete everything else. Okay. So now we can go in and we've got some different setting, settings that allow us to do some editing um, to this file. And the main thing we want to do here is auto fill the holes. And if, as I slide this slider up, you'll see it's going to highlight larger and larger holes. And again, those are just the areas the scanner just couldn't get, which is pretty typical. Um, it's going to fill those in with curvature based hole filling. It'll do a little bit of smoothing, whatever we want. And uh, right now we're set at one millimeter. We'll come back to that. So we hit the finalize button and it's going to go ahead and process and fill in those holes and do some very slight smoothing of the scan data. But you can see it looks really good as is. So once this is done, we can look at it and we can say, hey, that looks great. Let's go ahead and output it. But we can also increase the resolution. So we're at a one millimeter polygon mesh right now. If we want to go tighter than that, the beauty of the way this scanner works is you can do that because underneath is a point cloud. Um, and we're going to set this now to 0.5 millimeter and go ahead and reprocess it. Now, this will take a minute because it's going to basically quadruple the size or the resolution of uh, this uh, this mesh but what it's doing is going to the underlying point cloud and reprocessing it and repolygonizing it turning it into polygons which is basically like an OBJ or an STL file it's a three-sided triangle um, that it's going to create and once this is done then we can output it or export it in STL or OBJ format so the tighter you go uh, the longer this will take, the bigger the file will be, but it will give you definitely better resolution and detail. So now you see that it's done. If we take a look at it, you can see you just get crisper detail. You're just picking up more data. And again, that's always been there in the file. It's just what you uh, take that Roy raw point cloud and polygonize it to. So if that looks good, we just go ahead and export it. And we're ready for whatever downstream application we want to use this data for. 
Now, if you did want to scan with color or texture, it's very easy to do. You just push a button that says collect the texture as you scan. And you can see the scanner there has an additional camera that essentially um, records the texture or takes pictures of the texture as you're moving around. So you can see what we're doing here. If you notice the screen, you can see we're actually picking up uh, the color um, and you set the resolution you want to collect it at as far as the, uh, you know, the DPI of the color itself. It's basically taking uh, uh, images while it's scanning and applying that texture uh, to the statue. So if color's ever important or it helps in any kind of documentation or anything, um, you know, you can grab the, the color. And it's the exact same process. Now your files are gonna get larger because you're, you know, collecting more data, um, but it's, it's the same scanning process. Sometimes you have to go a little bit slower just because of, there's more going on. Um, but uh, other than that, you just scan as normal. And then you can see here when you're done, this is just right uh, out of the uh, scanner. You just export an OBJ file, which has an attached JPEG uh, and a file that basically uh, tells it how it's mapped on, but it's completely automatic. So, you know, you can get some nice, you know, rendering results uh, right out of the scanner with full color if that's something you desire.